morning. How are you feeling? Terrified. I feel sick to my stomach. You're bound to be scared, but try and stay... Don't give up hope. That is what I'm scared of. If they find me guilty, I am going to have to give her up, aren't I? That's not going to happen. Oh, come on, you saw them. Um, they tore me apart in that court yesterday. All right, so some things didn't quite go as well as I would have liked, but you've a good chance of being acquitted. Besides, you've got a secret weapon. What's that? Juries are very influenced by how someone comes across in the witness box, whether they seem innocent or not. I don't feel very innocent right now. In fact, if I was them, I'd probably throw away the key. Ross, I won't tell you again. Will you hurry up or we're going to be late? Oh, hiya. I wasn't sure if you were still asleep. Yeah, I went to the shops. I thought maybe I could cook lunch for you, me and Ross. Oh, it's a nice thought, but he's going to his mate Yusuf's. So they arranged it last week. Oh, right. You could take him, though. Gives you a chance to spend some time together. No, we can do it another day. It'll wait. No, it won't. You need to talk to him, Chris. Yeah, and what do I tell him? You tell him what you told me. The treatment's not working and they need to carry out more tests. You need to tell him the truth. He deserves it. Oh, hey, Sal. Have you, uh, have you got a minute? Not really. What's it about? Rosie. Then no. All the I know is, did she date yours last night? After what she did the other day? Why? What's happened? Well, we've had a bit of a barney and then she said she was meeting some mates in town. She must have stayed with them. Well, if I were you, I'd enjoy the peace and quiet while you can, because believe me, with daughters like mine, it won't last. Yeah. You're enjoying this, aren't you? Watching me suffer? No. Believe it or not, I don't want to be here any more than you do. Then please, just let me go. I won't tell anybody what's happened. Rosie. I won't even say that I've seen you. Honest. That's enough. All you have to do is walk into that courtroom and tell them what I told you to say, and then you can go. Well, it's pretty hard to remember stuff when you're tied to a jar and you're starving hungry. I didn't think models ate much. That is so not funny. Oh, look, I've got some more chocolate. Let's go through this one more time, and if you get it right, you can have some. So, let's start with the night Colin died. It's good you could make it. Yeah, well, it would have been here sooner if it weren't for work. I know. I'm sure Fizz does and all. Do you need the toilet? What? Oh, no, no, no. I'm just nervous. I can't stop my palms from sweating. All rise. He's taken Russ to Yusuf's. You should have been back ages ago. Yeah, well, he was going to tell him the news about the test results. All right, that's not going to be easy. No, yeah, well, Chris is pretty tough, so. It's talking about Russ. Well, what would you rather we lie to him? I didn't say that. He needs to know the truth, especially if things are as bad as what I think they are. Look, why don't um, I take the day off, eh? We'll get out of here, heading to town. I don't want to go into town. Besides, I've got cleaning to do. I've got Russ's kit to wash. Fine. If you want me, I'll be at work. Fiona Stape is a liar. This is not open to debate. It is a fact. She told the police that she had no idea her husband had stolen Colin Fishwick's identity. A lie. She told them that she'd never met Colin's elderly and gravely ill mother. A lie. Not only did she know her, but after Joy Fishwick's untimely death, the accused callously stole the money that she'd bequeathed to her son in her will. Uh, correction. Her missing son. Because that brings us to yet another lie. And this one, I think you'll agree, ladies and gentlemen, is in a class all of its own. Fiona Stapes swore she knew nothing of Colin Fishwick's whereabouts. The truth, however, was very different. She knew Colin was dead. How? Because she'd helped her husband dispose of his body. Lie 
after lie after lie. And in amongst all this deceit and half-truths, let us not forget the bodies of three people. Colin Fishwick, Joy Fishwick, and Charlotte Hoyle. What did these three people have in common? The knowledge to bring Fiona Stape and her husband John's tower of lies crashing to the ground. And yet now, we're being asked to believe that she knew nothing of these murders that her husband, John Stape, acted entirely alone and that she never once suspected or questioned him as to what was going on. Well, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, unlike the accused, I believe that you may find that last lie particularly hard to stomach. She's gonna lose, isn't she? Don't say that. Don't tell me I'm wrong. Then Fizz had the baby at the hospital. Good. Then what? Um, and then you went home and you moved Charlotte's body. What else? What do you mean? What else did I do? I don't know. Well, think. You went to bed? No. How many times? I got rid of the evidence. The hammer. The hammer that I hid behind the toilet. The one I wish I had here right now. Oh, please stop shouting at me. It's not my fault. Oh, for God's sake. So stupid. No, it isn't. Yes, it is. No one is going to believe me. No one is going to believe any of this. Well, they better for your sake. What? I'm a desperate man, Rosie. You're my last chance, and if that isn't desperate, I don't know what is. So you better get this right, and you better get it right today, because Fizz needs me, and I'm not going to let her down again. For the last few days, we've sat in this courtroom and listen to evidence and witness statements from investigating police officers to forensic experts. And you've watched as my learned friend and I have pored over their words again and again. And all of this, all of this, in order to ascertain one thing, whether or not my client is guilty of the crimes she's charged with. Now Fiona Stape, by her own admission, is not a blameless woman. She has readily confessed to fraud by false representation and, as you yourselves have seen, expressed great remorse for her actions. Now, whether or not you believe those actions were motivated by greed or by the desire to protect her child or by fear of her husband is not important. What is important, however, is that she has not once admitted any involvement or responsibility for the murders of Joy and Colin Fishwick or Charlotte Hoyle. And the reason for that is simple. She didn't do it. Because despite everything, the hours of witness statements, the cross-examination, the speculation, there is not one single concrete piece of forensic evidence, not one single eyewitness statement that can conclusively prove that my client, Fiona Stape, played any role in any of these murders. And for that reason alone, you must find her not guilty. So what happens now? As far as I understand, the court is adjourned and the jury attempt to reach a decision. And what do we do? We wait. <laughs> I went for a walk. Did you talk to Ross? I couldn't do it. We've got to tell him the truth. Why? It's just going to upset him. Because we need to prepare him for what might happen. Yeah, what if he doesn't? I thought you said the specialist. Yeah, forget what the specialist said. She's not the one going through all this, is she? I'm sorry. No, I am. Look, I'm not ready to give up yet. I'm going to fight this, but I can't do it on my own. I need your help. So what do we do? Just tell Russ everything is fine? Well, I, I ain't lying to him at all, but I don't want to hurt him anymore. Not after everything I've done, and not where there's still a chance I can beat this. So, what would you say? Will you help us? You know I will. They can't have put it away at that age, can't they? Yeah. I've got three. All girls, all teenagers. It's 
be honest, sometimes it's a relief to come in here. The difference is you get to go home afterwards. Yeah, darling. You want some more? Oh, yeah. Well, where are you now? What are you doing, driving in reverse? Look, I don't want excuses. Just get a wiggle on. Or the next thing you'll be picking up is your P45. Still on the happy pills, is he? Oh, I'm not in the mood for this today. I'll get someone to cover for you and go home. I'd rather be here. Oh, so that's what this is all about. Well, between you and me, Chris's tumour is not responding to treatment, so it looks like he's going to be with us a little while longer. And you're OK with that? No. I can hardly chuck him out on the street, can I? He wouldn't be out on the street. There's places he can go, care homes, hospices. Oh, I don't know. I mean, don't get me wrong. I feel sorry for the bloke. But my mate went through this when his old man got cancer. He took him in, tried to take care of him, then it got bad, really bad, and he just couldn't cope. I mean, do you want that for you and Cheryl? Not to mention Russ. No. Maybe you need to have a word with Chris, because if he's any sort of a dad, he won't want that either. Good night, Kev. You must give the ties on the call out. Actually, it's you what to wear with. Well, what's wrong? You seen Rosie today? No. Whatever she's done this time is your problem, mate. I've got enough. On my plate with our Sophie right now. Well, she hasn't done anything wrong. It's just no one's seen her since last night. Well, well she we here. But we've had a bit of a barney and she said she was meeting some mates. Only have spoke to one of her mates. She never showed up. Well, who else could she be with? All I know is she was showing someone around the flat and then she was heading into town. Who? What? Who was she showing around the flat, Jason? Uh, some bloke called Mr Chips. Have you got the estate agent's number? Well, I think so, back at the house. Right, come on. Imagine how Fizz must be feeling. Poor thing. Why is it taking so long? I mean, it's obvious she didn't kill anyone. She couldn't. Obvious to those of us who know her, but the jury can only make their decision on the evidence they're presented with. Tell me the truth. Do you think they're gonna find a guilty? I own a cafeteria. I'm hardly a legal expert. I know. I'm asking you as a mate. I remain hopeful that justice will be done and Fizz will be acquitted. Although... You have to admit that the prosecution's closing statement was very compelling. Who asked you? I I'm just saying. Well, maybe you shouldn't. I don't even know what you're even doing here. I'm as concerned about Fizz as anyone else. Oh, please. Spare me the Ioni came to offer my support speech. I've seen you in there, with your boiled sweets, straining your necks to make sure you don't miss a word. I resent that. Take it back. I shan't. Take it back. I shan't. Take it back. Just back here, Moyo. Both of you. My mate's sister. One of the best people I've ever met in my life is waiting to find out if she's going to prison. And all you two can do is argue. Just try thinking about someone other than yourself for a change. Sorry I took so long. The queue for the toilets was murder. What are you doing? I don't know what you mean. I mean, are you deliberately trying to make me angry? <sighs> I've never been good at remembering stuff. I am trying my best. You're trying my patience. All right. Yeah, cheers, thanks. Said not supposed to since yesterday. That's not half of it. There's something else. And the estate agent tried to call the client that Rosie was showing around the flat. And? I said the number didn't exist. Kev, where are you going? Where do you think? Round the flat. Well, they haven't got a key. I just want to go home. When you've done what I asked. No, no! Get this into your dense, pouting head once and for all. I give the orders round here, not you. So you do what I tell you, and you do it quickly, or I swear to God... <laughs> What now? Rosie? Rosie, you in there? Dad, help! Dad! Don't just stand there! Hi. Dad! Rosie, are you okay? Yo, yo. Hey! Yo, hey! Jace, Jace, you okay? Yeah, yeah, I'm fine. Just go after him! Right. What are you doing out here? Just getting some air. Clearing my head. How did things go with Russ this morning? I never told him. I suppose you're gonna say I should have. No, I think you're right. I'm trying to protect him. Well, thanks. That's what I want to talk about, really. Oh, yeah? Well, <laughs> You know we're all hoping things are going to work out for you, but what if they don't? And things take a turn for the worse. I mean, do you really want Russ around all that? Seeing you when you get bad. That's what you're saying. I'm saying we can't look after you here, not properly. I mean, you want to go somewhere where people can help you. 
give you what you need. You mean you want me to leave? It's just for the best. Yeah, well, uh, th thanks for all your help and for being straight with me, at least. What's going on? I'm going to get my stuff together, move out. What? When did you decide this? Just now. Is this your idea? We were just talking. Oh, and... really? Or was it more like you talking and him having to listen? It wasn't like that. Chris, explain to me. Explain it. what? Are you trying to throw him out? Well, just give me a minute. No, I won't give you anything. I don't even want to look at you right now. Do you want me to talk to her? I'll just tell her not to bother waiting up. Kevin, what's wrong? He's back in here. Scumbag Stape. He took Rosie. What? Look, she's all right. She's in the flat with Jason. Oh, my God. Where is he now? I don't know. I just chased him out here, and now he's disappeared again. What are you doing? He's not getting away again. He's gone into town if you're interested. Well, I'm not. You've been crying. No, we're having onions for tea. What's the matter? I'm tired. I'm tired of worrying about you, fighting with Lloyd, seeing what this is doing to Ross. Well, maybe he's right. Maybe I should go. Where? Anyway, I don't want you to go. Then what do you want? I just want things back the way they were. I remember before I got ill. Or when we first got together. It doesn't matter. It's not going to happen anyway. Well, then maybe we should just make the most of what we got. While we can. She looks like you. Do you think so? Definitely. Well, let's hope you have better luck than you, Mummy, eh? Yeah? Come on, darling. Okay. It's weird, isn't it? Somewhere right now in this building, there's a bunch of people sat around a table. Deciding whether I'm going to walk out of here or spend the next 10 or 20 years locked up. It's a big responsibility. Well, it's not that much fun on this side either. I'm sorry, I didn't no, mean to I'm imply. Sorry. It's not your fault I'm in here. I was so stupid. So stupid to believe all John's lies and to stand by him after everything he's done. And you know what's as bad? A part of me actually thought he was going to show up and walk into that court and say, let her go, it was me, she's innocent. Looks like he's fooled me again. Jewelry's coming back. You might want to start getting yourself ready. of the jury please stand have the jury reached a verdict upon which they are all agreed we have do you find the defendant guilty or not guilty of the murder of joy elizabeth fishwick not guilty
find the defendant guilty or not guilty of the murder of Charlotte Hoyle? Not guilty. Do you find the defendant guilty or not guilty of the murder of Colin Michael Fishwick? Guilty. <laughs> You have to listen to me. I haven't done anything. Mrs. Stape, you will be sentenced on Monday afternoon at two o'clock. Is that clear? No. You're making a mistake. Please, you can't do this to her. You can't do it. Take her down. <laughs> is exactly where people from biblical times or legends were here. Joanna Lumley's Greek Odyssey continues next tonight on ITV One.